So we did a video that we posted up talking about bedding and we used this particular chassis as an example of just how the inletting can go wrong and cause a lot of binding and torquing and everything. In upcoming prosumer gunsmithing classes, we will be going over and talking about and potentially teaching bedding as well as in person here at the school. But this one has been bedded. We're now just gonna lift the action out and sort of show you what it looks like, as well as show you what we've taken out, basically allowing the action to be, be stuck in that bedding compound. And when we lock it in at the appropriate inch pounds, uh, we're not gonna introduce any stress into the receiver. And we're gonna allow it to have a really good mating surface down below. So I'm gonna go ahead and remember last time we could actually push down here. There's no, no action screws locked in. We, we could push down here, the action isn't moving anywhere, we push up here. We can actually tighten the action screws. The action is not going anywhere as far as being locked into that bedding compound. Then we pick it up out. That's sort of what it looks like uh, pre-cleanup. So we still have to do a lot of cleaning up and getting everything uh, ready for the customer. But you can see Really got a nice surface up here, a nice contact down here that helps keep both the pitch and the yaw and the twist out. And then when we stick the action back down in and we set it in there, we actually can't physically move it. It doesn't move. We can push down here, the front's not moving. We push back here, the back's not moving. It's basically, with even no action screws locked in, it's solid as a rock and that's what you're looking for. So we get this question all the time is bedding absolutely necessary for a rifle to shoot great? And the answer is no, not necessarily. However, though, taking the time to check to make sure that you're not setting that receiver into an, a, uh, a chassis that's inletted wrong or incorrectly or uneven that's gonna potentially cause you an issue allows you to sort of make that decision. So when we get custom rifles here and we're building them, we tell the customer, look, we'll check everything to see if we really think it needs better or not, because obviously we don't want to have you spend all the money to better rifle if it's not 100% necessary. Uh, so we'll go over it and we're like, yep, it's got good contact everywhere, nothing's twisting and pulling, the inlet looks good. We'll go around with feeler gauges, give it a thumbs up. Does that mean it's going to be a quarter minute gun? No, this is where it separates out. If you really want a quarter minute rifle, or if you want the rifle to shoot to its fullest potential, absolute fullest potential, it should be bedded. And not just bedded, but actually bedded properly without introducing stress into the bedding compound, inadvertently continuing the problem even after you pull the action out because you've bedded it with that torque or tension or twist in it. Uh, basically, you just mirrored the same problem. So done correctly, it will absolutely help a lot with the rifle done incorrectly or by people with little to no experience doing this, um, you just basically continue the problem into the bedding compound itself. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, this is a great example of some of the things that can possibly go wrong in the manufacturing process and some of the ways that we would correct it in-house. See you in the next video.